over the wall. Welcome back to the Mr. Showtime Showcast. In this video, we're going to be talking about the legacy of Ont Springboka National Rugby Spun. I know I butchered that. My Afrikaans is swak. Yammer, right? I'm going to be talking about how the Springboks have made South Africa a better country as a whole. We're going to be talking about the history, you know, but not necessarily in the typical fashion that so many um, online content creators have spoken about. Uh, I'm just going to add a, a slight tweak, my own slight little taste, uh, my little take on it. So be sure to watch through to the very end, shall we? So thank you so much for uh, joining me. I acknowledge the history of this team. I acknowledge the political history, the ramifications in the past. The Springboks weren't allowed to play at first because, you know, it was a sport that is predominantly, well, well it was introduced by the Afrikaans folks, the Afrikaans South Africans. Back in those days where we were in isolation and politically, you know, it was doing apartheid. Now, fast forward just a while later, Nelson Mandela was set free from, you know, prison after spending 27 years, came out and he reunited, you know, the, the Springboks. He did the unthinkable at the time. Now, this is something that I would like my fellow South Africans to learn from. Because I see it's sort of like being lost in translation with regards to how we want to change certain things that has any and everything to do with Afrikaans people for some odd reason. Now, we are a type of people, I'm talking about us black folks, that came from oppression and we were, you know, advocating for, you know, equality, rights for all. But from now, what I see nowadays is now the sort of like a, a reverse uh, retaliation um, that comes with it. There's a video I saw, the YouTube channel's name is The Issue. Now, he's a Caucasian fellow and he talks about how, you know, South Africa went from the Springboks went from the, 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 the sports of the Afrikaans and post our democracy, uh, post establishing our democracy, the Springboks weren't yet a fully inclusive team because most of them were still made up of predominantly whites. And he said that that is the legacy of white supreme, evil white supremacy and biasness against players of color because Ch uh, Chester Williams, even back in 95, was the only player of color there in the squad. And since then, 2003 World Cup, 2007 World Cup, we won in, in 2007 World Cup, but there was still not enough black players included in the squad. And he makes, all of his points are pretty much valid, I agree. I concur, I agree with his takes. And then since then, you know, 2019 was the first time the Springboks was actually like an all-inclusive, all-encompassing team of various people, you know, you get the colors, you get the blacks, you get the whites, you get, uh, etc. And that's what made the 2019 World Cup special. It was the first team that had was like really uh, transformative 
inclusive of mine. There was enough black players, there was enough white players, there was enough colored players, etc. And we doubled it up not too long ago in this year's World Cup. Also, as a, a side claimer, you see, this alternative jersey is the best alternative kits I've ever seen. It's beautiful by its colors and its pattern, but more so its colors. Blue and white. I think it's a tribute to one of our animals here in South Africa, the blue crane. I think. I could be wrong. But this alternative kit is the most beautiful. Just based on its colors, its color combination. Light blue, aqua blue, and white. Lovely. Okay, back to the video. Valid points. Valid points. What I'm about to say, what I'm saying in this video, this is this video is not a critique of what he's saying. It's just an add-on to other avenues, not just in sports, but let's take it further to the corporate realm. Let's take it further politically. And I'm going to mention something that he didn't quite touch on, that I'm going to touch on. Uh, yes. The Springboks have had transformational issues with regards to squad. Say, for example, former Springbok coach Heineke Meyer. He was biased, you know, in terms of, you know, selecting players of color and well endowed. Yes, uh, I admit. And then in came Russell Erasmus. He's thinking he's been very fair, yada, 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 right? My thing is, we must be careful of these types of sentiments because not just in sports, let's just in other avenues as well. I feel for Afrikaans people because now it seems as if Afrikaans people in this country are not allowed to have industries that just belong to them. Names of and, 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 and pronouns of buildings and institutions that are just like Afrikaans, even though they established them themselves. They've been made to change and say, oh, this this street name must change because it's a symbol of, uh, of racism and whatnot. They say the old South African flag, it's a symbol of racism and then, you know, the stem, which is not true. The, the old South African flag, you know, the, the one that's orange, white and blue. That's not, that flag does not equal racism. It's a flag called the Union of South Africa, nicknamed the Orania flag, because it was the Dutch settlers who established uh, a, 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 a government, right? After the Anglo-Boer War, etc, etc. After uh, the British and the, 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 the Dutch, the Boer thingy went to war, and they were fighting over who's gonna, you know, establish the laws, uh, a, a, a government, a currency, etc., etc. Right? And I'm now, like, like I said, I feel for Afrikaans people because now they've been low, slowly but surely being etched out from participating in society. We have a university in our northwest province called NW, NWU, Northwest, no, northwest University, right? And their sports team used to be called NW Paka. Paka is Afrikaans for Eagles. Now I've seen there's like, because of transformation, the colors have been changed, the... Um, the, 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 the logo has sort of like changed and the name is no longer called NW Parker, now it's, it's called NW Eagles. Now, by my understanding, that university was established and built by Afrikaans people. Why is their name? Because now it's, the narrative is now, it's Afrikaans, so it must change to include, to be inclusive of other people. Like I said, are Afrikaans people still allowed to exist here in South Africa? These are very dangerous and very slippery slopes you must take. Uh, uh, you must keep in mind, because back in twenty fifteen and, and and prior, 
there was this protest by a certain group of rebels, pro-black rebels, who, you know, made the hashtag, hashtag Afrikaans must fall, and we have a political figure here in South Africa that goes by the name of Judas Malema, who made the song, shoot the poor, kill to, shoot to kill. He's a rebel. He's a ruffian. And that's the same type of mentality we do not need here in South Africa. Because we are not rebels. We understand history, but we move forward. We learn from it, but we move forward. We cannot keep perpetuating reverse apartheid onto white people for political closure. I don't see typically white people crying and belly aching to black businesses and black institutions saying that you should you should not name your institutions by your black native Zulu names and change it to English to accommodate us. You know why? Because Afrikaans people they've proven to be uh, dependent. Sorry, sorry, independent. They've proven to be self-sufficient, independent. They've proven to be independent. They know how to build their own industries. They know how to govern themselves. They know how to sustain themselves. But it's only people of color, black people at large, and I say this, this is not an offense to all black people, so please keep your, pan keep your panties, don't get your panties in a bunch. Understand the generality of what I'm trying to say. Black people are only people who constantly beg white people to be in their own to be in their spaces, as opposed to building our own industries, building our own institutions, being self-sufficient, so that we won't need these political protocols such as black uh, black economic black economic uh, empowerment, affirmative action, right? Because these things so sort of like disrupt the same people that have built their own industries. It's unfair if you are a particular group of people and you build your own schools from the ground up. And now you're forced to forego employing your own type of people because most people practice group economics. Every other group of every other group practice practices group economics. Except for black people. Now, one might make the argument that, oh, but it's because we were, you know, we're still disadvantaged. Wow. To this day, you were free like almost 30 years ago. We were set free and we're now living, in, we've had a democracy, a democratic republic for almost three decades. And you're telling me that black people still can't self uh, sustain themselves. They constantly need to, they, they need to force themselves into living in white neighborhoods, working in white establishments, and forcing their way in by means of uh, uh, affirmative action and BE. This long? I mean, I understand if it was like the first decade or so, just to get people on their feet. A decade is more than enough to, for people to just get on the same playing, level, uh, playing field, on the same level playing field. But again, this is not my opinion. Black people still need affirmative action, uh, black economic empowerment to get by. Why are black people not creating their own industry so they can survive without forcing white people to accept them and incorporate them in whatever it is that they do? I'm not saying it's wrong that they do, but I'm just saying that, my goodness, there's just too many of us. Why can't black people uh, survive by themselves? Why? I'll tell you why. Because we don't want to practice group economics. In our minds, right, as blacks, if in our minds, if it's not white, if it's not white, it's not right. You can have two stores. One vendor, uh, one street vendor selling apples and oranges who's black, and one other street vendor selling fruits and apples who's white. Most, even most black people would prefer to go to the, to, and, and patronize the, 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 the white street vendor. Because in their minds, they're thinking, oh, his fruits, his products are cleaner and better. Which is a flawed way of thinking. That's an indictment on black people's part. Folks, tell me I'm wrong. I dare you. You know what I'm talking about. 
I'm not saying black people should never ever participate in white industries. But you just solely depend on them. It's weakness on our part. Have we ever had the conversation here in South Africa that... Okay, black people. This happened to us historically. Out of our control. What is it that we can control? From, what is it from our side that we can control? Practicing group economics. Black people don't want to have the conversation. This is why the location, Americans call it the hood. Here in South Africa, we call it Elokshin, the location, Emakaya. This is why Emakaya and Elokshin, it still looks and it's still what it is today because black people fail to manage themselves. Black people fail to say, hey, okay, let us clean up our neighborhoods, let us upgrade our homes, let us save money, let us start businesses and patronize those businesses so that we, we can create a whole, uh, an economy in that particular uh, type of neighborhood so that you can upgrade. Have you ever seen a car dealership, an, auto, uh, an, an autom uh, automotive car dealership in the location? No. Have you ever seen a Lego store, a Lego toy store in the hood? No. Have you ever seen these high-end upper echelon clothing stores like Zara and Markham's and, and Kurt Geiger and Adidas, Nike, Puma, uh, etc., etc. in the hood? Ask yourself why. Have you ever seen a high-end three-story mall in the hood? No. The people from the hood, they, they go from the hood, these rural areas, and they come to the urban areas, you know, to buy to purchase whatever it is that they need. Why can't you build your own sanctuaries in the hood? Why not upgrade the hood so that you don't have this problem of migrating? There's people in Emakaya, they, 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 they wanna go to you know these model C schools or should I say these high schools because they think that, okay, the education over there is better. No, the education over there is not better. The institutions and the, the, the infrastructure may be better, but education is education. You can still learn one plus one is two in any school. Do you understand what I'm trying to get at? When will black people say to themselves, okay, we're going to support and patronize our own people? But typically, what do black people do? They burn each other's businesses down. Why? Because of jealousy. Because they're too lazy to compete. In this world, you have to compete. Competition is the name of the game. Okay? Back, back in the thingy, in the, in the previous century, back in the, uh, in, the 19, in the 1900s, Adidas, Nike, Still to this day, these brand, two brands are competing. Personally, I like Adidas. You know, the three stripes, I think it's awesome. Competition. They're still competing to this day. That's what black people don't understand. That's what black people don't want to thingy. They don't want to do. They don't want to compete. They constantly want sympathy and please, please. Oh, it's cool. It's woe is me because I'm black. That is a toxic way of thinking because it... it, 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 it it promotes weakness. I promote strength. I promote competition, healthy competition. So what I'm I'm, I'm saying to you now is, yes. Uh, what can we learn? What are, what have the spring box taught us? Yes, the spring box have opened them the the, the 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 doors have opened the gates for people of color to come in and play. And my goodness. We have seen the greatest people of color, black players, colored players ever. The likes of Cheslin Colby, the likes of Marcus Oma Pimpi. Lucano M reminds me of, uh, the, what's that guy uh, who used to play, that outside center used to play for the All Blacks? Conrad Smith. Sia Colisi. We have seen like world-class black players come into the mix. And we are very grateful. They have brought us not one but two World Cups. 
So yeah, Kulis is captain. Now, I'm very sad that he's going to play in France. He's no longer going to be eligible to play for the you know, international. I don't know. It's something, that's, something to do with his contract. Something along those lines. But I'm, I'm pretty sure two, in two years from now, he should, be, he, he should be back. But then again, considering his age, he may, may not. But let's say he doesn't come back. He, he he's already fulfilled. He he's already accomplished so much anyway. Two time the first two time uh, uh back to back World Cup winning captain. Now to end it like that is ending it on a high note. Spectacular. That's legacy. Receipts. But going forward, folks, what I what we can learn from Nelson Mandela. When he came out of, you know, from prison, his people were riding behind him, who were busy riding, riding him up and saying, Okay, Nelson Mandela, you're out. Now it's time for us to enact revenge. And it was the perfect setting to do so. And a lot of white people, they left. They, 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 they ran away to Australia, to, uh, overseas to, to New Zealand. Yes, I'm looking at you, Andrew, Andrew Mertens. Sun out. No, hey, 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 stay there. Stay there. It's your home. You've made your decision. No bad blood. You wanna be a you wanna be a Kiwi? By all means. Okay? <laughs> I'm just pulling your leg. Hey, you wanted to leave hey, you wanted to thingy be a South African New Zealander? By all means. But I'm just saying aside from you. But I'm just saying, folks, uh, and Again, you know, white South Africans, they left South Africa because they thought that, oh no, oh, these people now, they're gonna eat us. They're gonna eat, they're gonna, they're gonna bite our, they're gonna bite our heads off. It was tense at that time. But what did Nelson Mandela do? He said that, look, doing this whole tit for tat doesn't do us any good. And he said, listen, let's reconcile, okay? I'm gonna be the bigger man I'm going to treat all of us as patrons. I'm, I'm going to treat all of us as South Africans. And he said, remember one of his famous quotes, I have fought against white domination during apartheid, and I have fought against black domination, which is currently is what's still sizzling today in the name of BE and affirmative action. Nelson Mandela didn't say, okay, now we're going to stick it to the Boers, we're going to stick it to the whites. He didn't do that. Uh, this is the same person who they denied him to go to his mother's funeral while he was in Robben Island. Now, any other person, in, if it was any other person, them coming out would have had the most uh, 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 fiery, vengeful heart. Nelson Mandela didn't do that. He offered reconciliation. Who does that? Only a soul that is sent by God himself. Because look how stable, look how peaceful South Africa is. South, look at what South Africa is today. A first world, well, South Africa has always been a first world country. Just because we're an African country, that doesn't disqualify us from being uh, uh, considered a first world country. We are a first world country because of our infrastructure. The way our government is set up, we have freedom of speech, we have the, the Bill of Rights, okay? Our economy, it's not doing so well, but it's, it's well enough. Now, you know, looking at, looking at the title, some people might say, you know, I, 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 the title says, I feel for Afrikaans people. Someone might say in the comment section, yeah, but, oh, Mr. Shotan, but, but they don't care about Afrikaans people, they don't care about your black ass. And yes, you're right. And I'm okay with that. I do not need to live by their same blueprint. Okay? I have no problem with them. Now, if they have this mentality of, okay, you, you know, K-word, uh, so... Don't touch me. That's their MO. That's their modus operandi. And also, disclaimer, when I say them, this does not apply to all of them. I realize there's an exception to everything. I'm not gonna stereotype them the same way they tend to do with us. Okay? B 
be the bigger person. I understand there's exceptions to rule. As a matter of fact, did you know that during apartheid, there were whites helping black people, uh, standing side to side with black people when they were protesting, when they were fighting against the apartheid uh, regime? See, that narrative is not too popular. What we've been taught in schools is white people evil, white people bad. Only to, for me to watch, do my own research, uh, and, and I saw documentaries, and I've met some white people that have actually told me stories that, listen, I'm white as well, but I didn't agree with apartheid. I was, my uncle was there fighting with black people, helping black people during apartheid against the white government, and there's some whites who got arrested along with them. This is what most black people fail to comprehend. There are always exceptions to the rule. As a matter of fact, some might consider me an exception to the rule, as I've been told plenty of times. This is not an this is not, not a, a, a name I'm bestowing upon myself. I've been told so many times that, hmm, Mr. Showtime, you're uh, there's something different about you. <laughs> okay? There's always exceptions to the rule. So when, when I talk about a particular demographic or I talk about a particular group of people, I am not saying all of them. I am I, I'm generalizing, but it does not apply to all of them. So when people say that, oh, Mr. Shorter, why do you care about Afrikaans people? They don't care about you. And yeah. And so what? I don't need them to care about me. Okay. I can create and conjure up my own happiness because I'm busy pursuing my own endeavors. What I'm saying is the South Africans, leave white people, leave Afrikaans people to be. Okay. If they want to have this mentality of, oh, no, we don't want you. Uh, uh, sort mental. Okay, 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 cool. That's who you are. That's your proclivities. You be over there in your corner. We'll be over here in our corner and we can both be happy. I don't have to bother you. I don't have to force you to employ me because I can't, I'm too lazy to start my own business. Okay? Just let them be. Folks, let Afrikaans people be. Let them be. Okay? Stop forcing them, stop telling them to, they should change their, uh, the names of their schools and, and institutions just to, to accommodate everyone. No, build your own industries and be happy there. Let them do their thing and you also do your thing. Fair is fair, right? You don't need to force people to like you. Why are you forcing Afrikaans people to like their own? They don't owe it to us. Let them be. If you've been watching this far, thank you so much for watching. Okay? The Springboks are the most successful successful entity South Africa has ever had. And I like to inspire South Africans to take this energy that the Springboks have of success. And let's apply it to other industries. Let's apply it to politics. Man, we have no respect for our politicians. And rightfully so. Going forward, let us elect proper pro politicians. Let us inspire, we, 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 for the coming generations, we need to make politics interesting so that younger generations will, you know, they'll come into politics and they will have the right mindsets and we can have politicians that we champion just to, like celebrities, we respect, and they in turn will serve the country, serve the people well, not stealing tenders and, 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 and engaging in corruption. Okay, I want South Africa to have proper politicians and government figures, just like how, just like in America. We have the potential. Let's make it happen. But if you're watching this far, thank you so much for watching. And remember, this is my famous quote: "The Matrix has you. Don't fall for the psyops." Thanks, thanks for watching, Chips. Call it and scream from your soul.